How are we doing, YouTube? This is your boy, Trevor. And I'm here to create the best Star Wars tier list you'll ever see. So let's get right into it. So let's start with Star Wars Resistance. Um, I haven't actually watched it yet. And it's I heard decent things. But I heard okay things as well. Nothing bad. I, I would say it's just one of those animated shows that just skate by the bell. Nobody's actually pretty much watch except for like uh pr pretty much more more on the kids side so i'm just gonna put put it under okay and i want to put the second season i believe there's two seasons of this show i want to put both seasons under okay just to make it fair and so there's no biases next is i believe this is mando season one and mando season one is a tier hands down great show it is top tier, cannot beat it. Like it's one of the greatest, like just Star Wars TV shows of all time. And also, it just sets up a good foundation for future seasons. Next is season five for Clone Wars. So season five for Clone Wars, it is so good. Like you have Darth Maul. Fucking with Obi Wan, pretty much. You got so many cool lightsaber action scenes. You got the uh, walk away from Ahsoka. Uh, I would say A tier as well, top tier, hands down, one of the best. Uh, let's go. I believe this is season one of Clone Wars, and season one of Clone Wars. I want to keep it simple. I would say like the first two seasons of Clone Wars are pretty good. I yeah. So the those are the first two seasons right there, and those are good. I would say those are pretty good. They're not great. There are some cool arcs. There are some bad arcs. But it's good. It's not bad. But it's good. Uh, Clone Wars movie. I'm going to keep it simple. I actually like it more than others. I enjoy it. I remember watching it when it came out in grade 7. I want to keep it simple right there. It's okay. I, I like All I can say is I enjoyed it. More, probably more than others. Next is Solo. Solo's good. Not much to say. It's a good movie. Obviously, there's some controversy between the recasting of uh, for All in Ehrenreich and Harrison Ford stuff because the change in actors. But honestly, I'm I'm okay with it. Like, there's nothing too bad about this movie. It's not the best movie in the world, but it's still a really good movie. Next. The final season of Clone Wars. Now, I personally, there's three arcs in it. The Bad Batch arc, the uh, Ahsoka arc, then like the Order 66 arc. The Bad Batch arc is fucking amazing. The Order 66 arc is top tier, S tier Star Wars. But the, the uh, I think it's Botez sisters are kind of hit or miss they're okay i don't mind them personally they're okay and when you see them later on in bad batch i enjoy them they're a good introduction to like a new audience pretty much so i'm gonna say this i i enjoyed every single arc the final season of clone wars is fucking s tier and we'll bring it back another great movie right here rogue one fucking fantastic movie uh, next, uh, we do Force Awakens. Force Awakens is, I would say, Force Awakens is a good movie. The problem is, 8 out of 9 make it worse. 7 is a safe movie, and it's a good, there's a good reason why it's safe. The reason why I like Force Awakens is the exact same reason why I like Creed. Is because they're basically the exact same versions of the original movies. So basically you can say Force Awakens is episode 4. But you have to say Creed. Creed 1 is basically Rocky 1. There is no difference between how the way they structure along the plot lines between the two movies. They're very similar. From their predecessors. So that's why I think 7 is good. However, 8 and 9 bring it back. So at its peak, I want to say it's B tier, 
but because of eight and nine, it goes lower on the list, unfortunately. But at the time, we're gonna keep seven the way it is, because I I I really I enjoyed seven. I saw it three times in theaters. And it's a solid movie. I believe this is season three of Clone Wars. Uh, season three of Clone Wars. I want to say it good. Uh, it starts to pick up as soon as you hit after season three. The first three seasons are good, I would say. I would say this is even at the top of like B and A, pretty much at the verge of B and A. But it's not great just yet. Uh, A New Hope. Now, this is, might be controversial. And maybe because I'm a bit older. I find A New Hope, so I, I have trouble sometimes watching A New Hope sometimes because sometimes I find it a bit boring, just a bit. It's still, again, still a great movie. Like, I have a fantastic time watching this movie sometimes, but sometimes when I watch it myself, uh, uh, I can't do much about it sometimes. But again, no hate. It is the foundation of Star Wars. It's still a great movie. It's just not my favorite when it comes to the other two in the trilogy. Revenge of the Sith. S tier. Hands down. One of the best Star Wars movie. I would say it's easily a top three Star Wars movie of all time. There's not much like these two go hand in hand with each other. And I'm waiting for the days where someone makes a fan cut of episode three. Mixed in with the Ahsoka or uh, the Order 66 arc of the last season of Clone Wars. It's it's a French kiss, basically. It's top tier. Uh next is the clone or uh, sorry, uh episode two, Attack of the Clones. It's it's um it's okay. Uh there's some okay stuff to it. There is some okay stuff to it. There's some not good stuff to it. But honestly, that's okay. Because you know why? It's... I think it makes up in the story. I think the acting itself is okay. Problem is... Oh, sorry. Not... Sorry. The story itself is good in itself. The problem is the acting at some parts is brutal and the dialogue is brutal. But the story itself and the way it paves through the future of the movies and stuff and how much of a big deal episode two is, is very important. So we'll do Rise of Skywalker. I've seen Rise of Skywalker two times in theaters, I believe. The first time, it was okay. Second time I watched it, the, pretty much the day after, it got worse, I believe. So it's just something about this movie. It's there's too many contradictory things. It just feels so doesn't feel organic enough. Like it just feels. <clears throat> again, it's not a bad movie. It, I wouldn't even say it's OK. It's just it's it's a good. OK, I want to say this. None of these movies are not good. It's just there is a difference between good Star Wars movies and a bad Star Wars movie. Like, Rise of Skywalker itself is not a bad movie, standalone. There's some great scenes. The, like, it, it makes sense. I, I, I can follow it A to Z. It's just, if you were comparing it to everything else in Star Wars, it's just not good. Um, Rise of Skywalker. Oh, sorry, not Rise of Skywalker. Um, the Last Jedi is basically the most controversial movie of all time, pretty much in the Star Wars community. With some okay reasons why. It's just, it's just not my favorite. It's just one of those things where there's just so many things and so many aspects to the movie that I do not enjoy at all. It's just not a hard watch. I prefer re-watching Episode 7 and stopping right there. Then rewatching eight and nine. Like I try sometimes to re rewatch eight and nine, mostly because I I do want to enjoy these movies. Like I'm not here to, like, hate on these movies at all. It's just I enjoy watching the Clone Wars animated TV show, 
like movie a lot more than I did at eight and nine. And it, it shows. I, I, I can't really explain why. It's just one of those gut feelings where it's like, I just can't enjoy eight and nine. And again, it's just it's nothing ever against like Ryan Johnson or JJ Abrams. It's just it makes seven worse. And I, I love seven at the time. I thought it was a good, solid movie for a foundation. So the problem is eight and nine makes seven worse. And it pisses me off because I will happily defend seven. Like they played it safe. And there's a reason why they played seven safe. And it's understandable why. Because at the time, people hated the prequels. And nobody can tell me otherwise. I seen the hate. I saw the hate. People didn't start liking the prequels until 7, 8, and 9 came out. And then there was the prequel love. It's absolutely ridiculous. But 7, 8, and 9, they're good movies. Just as not good Star Wars movies. 7 is a good, safe pick to bring everybody back into this mo- like uh, universe. The problem is 8 and 9 fumbled the ball. Empire Strikes Back. There's no argument here. It is. Sorry, I had to drag it up. It is one of the best movies ever made. There's not much to say <coughs> other than it's one of the best. The greatest plot twist of all time. One of the most redeeming stuff you can ever propose with just how they made the movie, the filmmaking aspects, the behind the scene aspects. Again, it's one of the greatest movies of all time for a reason when it comes to trilogy wise. There's it's basically a noun or a verb or whatever, whatever the proper English dictionary thing is when you have a good solid movie and more of a happy movie with a cheerful ending. You come back with the Empire Strikes Back of a part two or something like that. It's it's the foundation of how dark it is sometimes meeting how a cliffhanger it was at the time to the uncertainty of are is Han Solo dead? Is Luke gonna become a Jedi Master? Is how her how the hell are they gonna defeat Vader? Oh, and they're still the Empire. How the hell are you gonna defeat the Empire? Or Emperor, sorry. Uh Phantom Menace. I have a soft spot for the Phantom Menace. I would say it's the second. I I enjoy it more than Attack of the Clones. The problem is it suffers the exact same problems as Attack of the Clones. But the good stuff is good. But the not so good stuff is not good at all. The pod racing scene, the duel of the fates. And I personally, I, I enjoy the story of the politics behind the Clone Wars and the Phantom Menace. I can I can excuse that because it's actually very interesting how a rep like a republic or a democracy can fall through like dictatorship, and it's incredible. It's like, what are you willing to sacrifice? Of are you willing to sacrifice your safety for war over your individual rights and freedoms? And that's why I really I do I can defend one and two because I grew up I never hated them. I thought they were okay. I always knew there was some bad acting scenes in it, but number like episode one always has a spot in my heart. Because again, it's again it's that first movie that I saw in theaters with my father that I remember. Same with episode two. Like those are the first like easily the first two movies I remember seeing in theaters with my father. Next is season one of Rebels. I. Him in the minority. I like all three seasons of Rebels. I think season one of Rebels is very good. And I don't care what anybody says. It is a great. <laughs> it is great. There is obviously some filler, like with some of these shows, but I love it. I then we move on to season two of Rebels. Season two of Rebels is good. Is basically the foundation of how the rebellion started with all the characters, but that's okay, and I love it for that reason. So I'm gonna go back to great. I wouldn't say anything, and I'll just go next throughout season three of Rebels. 
great. Season four of Rebels, great. Nothing stands out out of Rebels, but there is some great stuff in it. There's no S tier quality. There is some S tier quality stuff, but and then there's some okay stuff. But majority of it is great to me. And there's not much to say other than that. Like I I am a sucker for like I can watch this show anytime. And I still get goosebumps of the very first episode in the pilot when Kanan like just appears and shows he's a Jedi master and everybody starts to like freaking out. And I don't know what else to say, but like that scene gives me goosebumps. Like I'm getting goosebumps just thinking of that scene. Like, let me just pull that up. Like you, uh, Kanan reveals he is. a. It's just, it gives me goosebumps every time I see this scene. And it's just so good. The secret? Kid, I'm about to let everyone in on the secret. Oh, the music. To this day, oh god, it's just oh, I don't, I don't care, I don't care how old I get, I will get goosebumps from that scene, and then the death of him is just absolutely tragic, and it makes me cry, or it makes me tear up pretty much every time I see it. Um, next we'll go into season six, the I I believe it's called the Lost Missions, for season six of Clone Wars. It's good. That's good. There's some great stuff in it, but I would say it. I would. It's forgotten, unfortunately. When you think of the best of Clone Wars, you think of season five and season seven. But the problem is, they got compromised in season six because they canceled the show like halfway while they're developing in season six. But that show that. Like season could have been something great with the lost missions and stuff. So I'm gonna keep it at good for what it is. But what I've heard is like some of the story arcs for season six would have been incredible and would probably have put it to A tier, I believe. The Lost Disciple, um the uh, the Darth Maul arc of escaping Palpatine's imprisonment. Like that's that arc would have been incredible to see. Next is season four. I would go season four. I'll put it right beside. Season four of Clone Wars is fucking amazing. You're reintroducing them all. And you're getting... Oh, it's just so good. Four, five, and seven are probably the best season of Clone Wars. We'll keep it right there. Uh, Bad Batch. Bad Batch season one. Or Bad Batch one and two. I'll combine those two. They're incredible. They're gr- they're good Star Wars TV shows. However, I'm gonna say they're cr- I w- I'm gonna even say they're great. Like I love the pilot of the Bad Batch. Like I can rewatch that all the time. It's just so good. It's just like lost soldiers trying to find their po- like space in the universe after they they've literally lost their purpose of fighting a war. And what do you do? Do you join the new empire or do you make your own thing and leave? Like, it's incredible. I want to save visions later, um, mostly because I'm not the biggest fan of visions, but I love what they were trying to do. And I love the anime or the uh, anime styles that they were trying to receive. So I'll, I'll come back to it later and I'll make it later. Uh, the book of Boba Fett. It had some good stuff. Um, it's okay. I'm not gonna say it's probably. I'm gonna say it's probably the weakest show out of them all. Um, I'm trying to think. It's probably the weakest. 
probably the two best episodes are not even met with Boba Fett, unfortunately, which is unfortunate. But that's okay. Can't do much about it. Season two of The Mandalorian. There's like no like like it's top tier. Like there's no much argument to that. It is top tier. It's incredible. The Ahsoka stuff. Um the Luke Skywalker stuff at the end. Uh the Boba Fett stuff. Oh my god. It is just It's it takes my breath away sometimes when I watch that show. Uh, that's season w- or am I mixing these two up? <sighs> Shit, I don't know which one it was, but this is supposed to be season two of Mandalorian. Or whatever season two. Hold on. Season two. Mandalorian. Images is on the speed. Okay, yeah, I'm right. Okay, S- season two, he's on the speeder. Okay, perfect. So season two, top tier, probably the the best live action TV show so far. And then we go to probably my favorite Star Wars TV sh- or sorry Star Wars movie. It is Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi is just top tier. Like, there's not much to say. Like, it probably, for me, just, I'll rank S tier. It'll probably go Return of the Jedi, Empire Strikes Back. I would say Mandalorian Season 2. Uh, no, I want to go Clone Wars, the final arc, basically. Mando, the whole Mandalorian Season 2 is God tier. And then... Uh, Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith does have its not good moments, but the memes, the jokes, and it's just it's just such a good time. It's just it's what movies are supposed to be. They're supposed to be a fun time to watch, and it's just incredible. Now, Visions, I'm not gonna. I want to say it's okay. Like, it's. It's okay. I don't know what much to say, but uh, but it's okay. I like I I didn't really enjoy it that much, but can't do much about it. Now there's season three of Mandalorian. And I'm going to say. Uh, downloads. Downloads. Okay, so I just added it. It's. I can't even. It's okay. Like there are some good parts. There's not some good parts, unfortunately, but it's an okay. It's an okay show. It's an okay season. It's just, it's not good compared to everything else that came before it. Like season one and two is amazing. And I try to look at these stuff on itself. So like if I just see, okay, is uh, Mando season one. Um, Sorry, is Mando season one good on itself? Okay, yes, it is. Season two on itself, amazing. Uh, is season three good on itself? It's okay on itself. Like, if season three was the first show that came out, or the first Star Wars one that came out, that, it would not have been good. Okay, can I, uh... Now, I need a Soka TV show. Soka Tano... Poster. Okay. Uh, downloads. Okay. 
Okay, Ahsoka. I would say it's great. I enjoyed it. I think the first five episodes are incredible. It's some of the best Star Wars we have ever gotten. The problem is the remaining six and seven are only good. So I would say basically it's it's a gr- it's a pretty great show. There is some questionable stuff. However, on itself, if we didn't have any of the Mandal- other Mandalorian stuff, it still pretty much holds up on its own pretty well. I would say I love the opening scene of introducing Balin and Shin Hathi with the reverse Phantom Menace output. I love the lightsaber, lightsaber battles can be a little bit questionable about sometimes, but I think that's more on the episode episodes six and seven of the season. But even in six and seven, when they introduce Thrawn and bring back Ezra, spoiler alert, it's still a good show. It's like it doesn't it's not as amazing as the first five, but it's still good. So that's my tier list. I I actually don't think there's any bad Star Wars product out there. The problem is there's no I would say I want to say this right now. There's no bad TV shows or movies Star Wars wise. There's just bad sorry, there's no bad movies when it comes to or bad TV shows when it comes to Star Wars. The problem is when it comes to inside the universe, there are some things that are lackluster. Like a lot of the bottom stuff, it's unfortunate. Like eight and nine, they're supposed to be the big spearheads of the universe or the trilo- the new trilogy. They're okay. They're okay. Not much to say about it. So pretty much that, that's my tier list, everybody. Um, <laughs> thank you so much if you uh, save for the rest of the video. Thank you so much for the support. Hopefully, if everybody has a wonderful day, hit that like and subscribe down below, and maybe I'll bring out another tier list next week. So in the meantime, well, <laughs> since it's Star Wars scene, may the force be with you.